What can you really learn from just a phone number? More than you might think. The first step is often validating it. Is it real? Is it a cell phone or a VoIP line? But the real investigation starts when we ask the next crucial question. Who does it belong to? Today, we're diving deep into the techniques used to connect a string of digits to a person. Our mission is to find out who owns or has owned that number. Our objectives for this investigation are twofold. The primary goal, of course, is to identify the current owner of the phone number. But just as important is our secondary goal, uncovering its history. Phone numbers get recycled all the time. Finding data linked to a previous owner can send an investigation in the wrong direction. By looking for both current and historical records, we can build a more accurate picture. Let's start with the most fundamental tool of all. The easiest and most often overlooked step is a simple, strategic Google search. But you have to be smart about it. Websites list phone numbers in dozens of different formats. As you see on the left, for international numbers, you should search with the plus sign, with 00, zero or with just the country code. For US numbers, try the formats with no spaces, with dashes, with dots, or with spaces. You can also try putting the number in quotation marks. This tells Google to search for that exact string of digits, which dramatically reduces noise. Let's see a quick demo. I'll start by taking our international number and putting it directly into Google, making sure to use quotation marks. This forces Google to search for that exact sequence of numbers, which is a critical OSINT trick. And look at what we've found. On one hand, Google gives us some general information about this number block. But here's the real prize, a hit from PeeringDeeb. This is a public database, and it lists our number as the technical contact for an organization. And with it, we have a name, Casamalvi. Just like that, in a few seconds, we have a potential owner and a huge piece of context, the organization they're tied to. Now, a good investigator doesn't stop at the first result. I'm going to try searching with a different format. OK, here's a hit on a forum. But reading the content, it's clear this is just a random mention and not related to our target. It's a good reminder to always verify your findings. Let's shift gears to a US number. I'll use the same technique, searching various formats. You can see the results are different. They're dominated by people search engines and public record sites. These are powerful resources that aggregate data, and we'll explore them in their own section at the end of this video. This process demonstrates why a strategic Google search should always be your starting point. But if it gives you nothing, don't worry. That's when we bring in the specialized tools. When a basic web search fails, our next stop is crowdsourced phone number identification services. These apps build their massive databases by asking users to share their phone contacts. In essence, they are a global, unofficial phone book created by millions of people. The biggest player in this space is TrueCaller. With a database of billions of numbers, it's an essential tool. You enter a number, and if a user has saved that number in their phone with a name, TrueCaller will show it to you. Sync.me is another excellent service that works the same way. Sometimes Sync.me will have a name that TrueCaller doesn't, or vice versa. Always check both. Then you have services like NumLookup. While its coverage is limited to only a few countries, for those regions, it can be very effective and sometimes provide a full name for free where others might not. The key limitation for all these services is that the data is only as good as what users have entered. A name could be a nickname, 
pizza guy, or just plain wrong. That's why cross-referencing is key. Let's do a quick demo. First up, we'll check our number in TrueColor. You can just head to their website on your browser and log in with an account. Now a very important note on privacy. I highly recommend using a sock puppet or a non-primary Google account for this. You can also install the app in your smartphone. But the app itself asks for a lot of permissions, so I personally avoid installing it on my main device. Okay, let's put in our target phone number and see what it finds. And we have a hit. Truecaller has identified the owner as Kasim Alvi and even provides a profile picture and a linked email. That's a huge lead. But is it correct? The best way to build confidence is to verify. Let's check the same number in sync.me to see if we get a matching result. And this time, we only get the country and location. We don't get a name. This perfectly illustrates the point. You never know which service will have the data you need. That's why we always check multiple sources. Let's try one more, num lookup. It's known for having limited country coverage, so this time we'll use our US number. And bingo. We have a full name and an associated location. So you see the process. You query multiple independent databases. Sometimes they confirm each other, and other times one will have a critical piece of information that another is missing. That's the core of good OSINT work. Now let's pivot to tools specifically designed for US phone numbers. These often tap into different data sets and can offer unique capabilities. Here we have a few fantastic US only tools. Spy Dialer and Caller ID Test perform a direct CNAME lookup, which is the official caller ID name database. Then we have United States Phone Book, which attempts to link numbers to addresses. But for historical investigations, oldphonebook.com is a gem. It's an archive of old phone directories, allowing you to see who might have owned a number years or even decades ago. This is incredibly useful for untangling recycled numbers. Let's explore the powerful tools available specifically for US numbers, and we'll start with a classic, Spy Dialer. I'm entering our US number and clicking search. You'll see it gives us a choice. I'm going to choose the name lookup option to begin. The tool quickly returns a likely first name and approximate location and the carrier. As you can see, the free version often redacts part of the name, but it's a great starting point. A unique feature of Spy Dialer is the photo lookup. Let's see what it finds. For this number, we only get a location photo, but it's always worth checking as it can sometimes find associated social media or contact photos. Now let's corroborate. We'll use calleridtest.com. This tool is different. It queries the official CNAM database, which is what populates the caller ID on your phone. I'll input the number, and we get a full name, Raza Imran. This confirms the partial name from Spy Dialer and gives us our first solid piece of evidence. We can build on this further using the United States phone book. Running our search here, and it connects a similar name to a full physical address. Each tool adds a new puzzle piece. Lastly, for historical OSINT, we turn to oldphonebook.com. This is an archive of past phone directories, organized by year. For this particular number, we don't find any historical records. But imagine you're investigating a landline that's been around for decades. 
this tool could tell you who owned it in 1998, which is incredible for untangling recycled numbers. Finally, we arrive at the most powerful and most privacy-invasive set of tools, people search engines, also known as data brokers. These sites aggregate vast amounts of public and private data to build detailed profiles of individuals. Platforms like True People Search, Fast People Search, and That's Them are some of the most comprehensive free options. You can search by phone number, and they will often return a full name, age, current and past addresses, email addresses, and even a list of known relatives. You'll see many similar services, like Number, and it's always worth checking several, as their data sets can differ. But to streamline this whole process, OSINT professionals turn to Michael Basil's Intel Techniques telephone search tool. This is a meta tool. You enter the number once, and it generates dozens of pre-formatted search links for all of these data brokers and more. It's an indispensable workflow tool for checking many sources quickly. Now let's see these people search engines in action, starting with True People Search. I'm selecting the phone search, entering our number, and we have results. The top hit is for Rohula Raza, and it's rich with detail, including current and past addresses. A key feature here is the list of other associated phone numbers, which are potential leads for a deeper investigation. The search also returned a second person, Ali Raza. Let's examine this profile. We can observe that his primary phone number is different, but by scrolling down, we see our target number listed in his history. This confirms he's a previous user of this number. Now let's move to our second website. FastBackgroundCheck.com After searching the number, we see two names pop up. Bakramjeet Singh and Ali Raza. This confirms our finding about Ali, but introduces a new name. Noticeably, it did not find Rohula. Next is Fast People Search, which gives us the same result, Bakramjeet and Ali. These tools seem to be drawing from a similar data pool. Let's try thatsthem.com. This result is different. It finds the current owner as Rahula Raza and lists a home address, corroborating our first search from True People Search. Finally, we'll check Nuber.com which also identifies the current owner as Rohula Raza. So, what have we learned? True People Search, that's them, and Nuber all point to the same current owner, while the other two services point to historical owners. This is the reality of OSINT. Data is messy and sometimes contradictory. To manage this complexity, we use the Intel Techniques tool. I'll enter our number once and hit Populate All. It instantly creates a dashboard of search links. Now I can systematically work my way through True People Search, Fast Background Check, and dozens of others, efficiently comparing all the data to build the most accurate picture possible. And there you have it, a complete workflow for connecting a phone number to an identity. We started with the simple power of a Google search, moved to crowdsourced caller ID apps, explored specialized US-based tools, and finished with the deep dive capabilities of people search engines. The most important takeaway is to cross-reference everything. Never trust a single source. By confirming a name across multiple, independent platforms, 
you build confidence and ensure your investigation is on the right track. I hope this guide was helpful. Thanks for watching and stay curious.